Hey everybody, Ben here, and today we're trying something new. We talk a lot about the four rules here on this channel, and we have lots of hypothetical examples and witty analogies, but you don't often get to see them in action. So today, you're going to meet Sam and Kayla, a married couple living in California with their son Ryan. They've never tried YNAB before, but they agreed to learn the YNAB method and give it a try for a month. So let's see what they think of YNAB. This is your all's first encounter with YNAB, is that right? Yes, we've heard okay. of it, but haven't used it before. I would love for you guys to just share a little bit about kind of what would you say your story with money has been kind of up to this point? To start at the very beginning, we met when I was um, in uh, law school. And, uh, you know, at that point, we would both already accrued student debt and I was in the, you know, still accruing debt in law school as we were going. I graduated a couple years later and it was kind of a tougher market. So it wasn't having kind of, you know, it was uh, tougher to find the jobs you would think coming out of law school when you start. Um, so we kind of started off slow there as well. But, you know, that I, I've gotten different jobs and that's, that's changed since then. And, and we've since had a, had a son and we've bought, a, bought our own place. So, you know, it's, life, life has obviously changed as we've gotten older. But um, I think the biggest money issues have just been kind of uh, that underlying student debt that we're still paying off. And then just kind of trying to balance that with, you know, ha raising a family, our son and having fun with him and just kind of trying to find uh, that balance between responsibility and still having, you know, living the life that we want to live and not, you know, uh, mm. not just saving for, for the rest of our lives kind of thing. In the, in the beginning, we were like super conscientious about our spending as students because we didn't have a lot of money and it was, um, you know, we didn't want to go into further debt. And then as time has gone on, become more comfortable. Um, it's just a refocusing of our priorities and really trying to make sure that we're on the right track so that we're doing like the buckets of retirement and for our, you know, our son's college and then also, you know, eventually saving for a bigger place. So it's just the priority shift. And so we just wanted to do something like this. So we would know that we're kind of on the right track. What has been your perception of yourself as far as being good with money? Um, I mean, for me personally, I'd say like I do prioritize saving. I think we're like, okay, I don't know. I think that can always be better. So mm -hmm. I'd say we aren't like overspenders. Um, definitely try to live within our means and below if we can too. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think it's a little cyclical, you know, like, well, there'll be times where we're kind of really buckled down and like we've, we've done things where we've tried to like have some type of uh, shared budget or some shared kind of tracking of, of, of spending or whatnot. And we'll do that for a while. And then there's all, then we'll kind of go through a little period where we're a little bit more relaxed and just kind of, just kind of going with the flow and not really paying as much attention to, you know, how much money is going in or out. What would you say have been kind of some of your biggest uh, stressors or, or challenges. And that could be like a particular kind of expense, or it could be a situation, a habit or a mindset thing. I think, I think it's in short answer, I think it's the student loans. It's not, it's not that there's huge payments. It's just that that large, uh, like kind of lump sum sitting over, uh, hanging over your head just makes it it's hard to feel like you're doing well financially when you know that that, that, that big number is hanging out there, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. It, even though, you know, a mortgage is the same kind of thing, but for some reason, it just feels different when it's a student loan. It just doesn't feel like, you know, you're not getting, you're not getting quite the bang for your buck as you are a house, so right. to speak. So it's just kind of, there's always just that big kind of elf in the room kind of thing, I guess I would say. So let me, let me ask you this question. If those student loans uh, were to, to poof or like were gone tomorrow, what do you think you'd want like the next step? to be for you guys right now we live in a, in a town home you know with with not much of a yard so i think you know we have a young son who likes to play sports and whatnot so i think a larger house with some kind of uh, a yard for him to play in or parks close by would be kind of our next kind of large scale goal and i'd say also um trying to find some way to like get back to our community as well like if we can be on like mm -hmm. a solid financial ground then we can also you know do things help other people we like to be pretty generous like to our friends and our family and but we have to remember that we can't do or we shouldn't do that until we like have certain things like figured out on our end so right off the bat here are my three big takeaways number one sam and kayla want clarity and permission 
They want to know what they can responsibly spend while honoring and protecting their priorities. Two, they want something sustainable and easy to use. They were using their own spreadsheet prior to this, and they found it difficult to stay on top of, often finding themselves playing catch-up at the end of the month. So it needs to be easy. And finally, they have four major goals. They want to pay off their student loan debt, move to a better-sized house with a yard, feel confident about giving generously, and make sure that they're not being so frugal that they forget to enjoy their money. We walked through the four rules together and set up a YNAB budget. I really enjoyed my time with Sam and Kayla, and I think you will too. So here are the highlights of that conversation. So let's start to, to dive in a little bit. YNAB has kind of two parts. The app is really um, kind of the tool for implementing what we call the YNAB method or the four rules. These are four rules that you run your spending through to help you make better spending decisions. So the idea of rule one, it's called give every dollar a job. Every single one of those dollars that you have right now, you're going to want to give a specific job in your plan. That includes your savings dollars. So money that's in your savings account, rather than just letting that sit as a big number that you can fall back on, you wanna ask yourself the question of what do we need to save for? And this is where we bring in another one of the rules, which is rule two, uh, which is about embracing your true expenses. Uh, and really what it means is you wanna embrace all of your expenses uh, because it's really easy to fixate on what's happening on kind of the regular cycle, like mortgage, groceries, mm -hmm. fuel, all the stuff that kind of is happening all the time. Often it's not like the monthly things that are getting people kind of knocked off, off the wagon. It's usually those things that are um, unexpected, they're inevitable, but some of them we just don't know when they're gonna happen or we just forget that they're gonna happen. And what I love about rule two is that we're just taking that big bill that would feel very uh, you know, daunting or annoying to deal with and we're just breaking it into more bite-sized pieces. The way I think about this is like, it's like I'm turning a like yearly expense into like a monthly subscription. And I wanna give you guys just um, a, a minute or two to just kind of on your own think about what are some of these true expenses for you guys. So what are some things that you might not need money for it this month, but you're gonna need money for it eventually. And that could be anything from car repairs to holiday gifts to birthday party to whatever. The ones that, yeah, it was, it's funny that, because one of the things I struggled to figure out with the Google Drive or the Google Sheet was like, how to handle those kind of yearly expenses. So like, cause they never seemed to really fit within the monthly thing well, you know, cause it wasn't like, they were only do like one month, like car insurance, I think was one that used to, it used to kind of confound me or um, um, yeah, the car insurance, I think would be one. I guess property taxes would be like a big one, vet bills. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, th I think I think holiday gifts, I, I didn't thought about that until you said something, but I think holiday gifts would be a big one because we tend to kind of, we have a, pretty large family, large family. So we tend to kind of, and the Christmas shopping ends up being pretty, pretty uh, expensive or pretty uh, significant. So I would say holiday gifts. Um, I guess they're not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, they're not really regular, but like vacations, I guess, or like trips. Mm. I'm, not, you know, I'm not sure if that's a, if that's one or not, but like, like uh, we tend to go, like we tend to go to see her, uh, KOS family or my family who are in different, who are in different States sometimes. So, you know, there's usually, we tend to at least go to one of them each year. So, you know, some kind of, some kind of trip thing, maybe our sons like soccer and school kind of expenses, you know, or extracurriculars and uh, school expenses. Um, Let me just pause here because like Sam, you might be asking, is vacation at your expense? And I would say, yeah. Sam said a lot of those trips are about seeing their family, which I could tell was important to them. Budgeting is all about aligning our money with our priorities. So yeah, if taking trips is important to you and you can afford it without compromising other more important priorities, totally at your expense. We have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, like most, most of us do. I mean, one of the things I find when we don't kind of break these down and make them a monthly thing, then what happens is our budget, our month to month expenses become so up or down, right? There are some months, mm -hmm. you know, where everything's just kind of, fine and chill and very bare bones. And then there are other months like December uh, where things just skyrocket, right? Yeah. 
-hmm. And what we want to do rather like you can do that. That's functional. But how much easier would it be right to know that each month like this is what we got to set aside to handle everything. Um, Mm -hmm. I want to let's I want to look at an example kind of uh, talked about vacation so this is one of the things I really like doing. Uh, we just went on a vacation, my wife and I, to uh, Colorado. So let's say that I'm going to plan, we're going to take the same trip next year, right? Let's say June 9th. So now I can just go to YNAB and say, okay, what if we wanted to spend around $3,000? let us say we wanted to do that. Then YNAB tells me right now, okay, this is what you're going to have to set aside month to month to make that happen. And if I'm going, okay, that's more than I think I'd want. Maybe we could do something more like 2,500 that I can see what the difference is there. Usually I'm surprised by how little or how much things go up or down. Um, Let me actually, let's hop over to a budget that has all of the targets in it already. With this right now, assuming this is covering most of my true expenses and everything, I know then that with pretty minimal variability that this is gonna be the number that I need to be able to uh, set aside each month for all of these spending, savings goals, everything. To me, that's really powerful. When you know what your income is, your monthly income, and you make a plan uh, that covers all of these non-monthly things, and then you can look over here and go, okay, we can afford to do that in that time mm-hmm. frame. Not just what can we afford this month, but can we afford you know, what we're gonna need to be able to afford six, seven months from now? When you get all those true expenses in there, then you're seeing the actual complete picture, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's what I find so powerful about that. And I think that'll be really helpful to like see the clear picture because we want to be able to put it down into like bite size, you know, like paces that we can actually like meet every month. I don't know when it's just a large number and we pay for it, but it's just, it'd be feels more manageable when it's um, we're doing a little bit each month. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because up until in previously in our own efforts, like we've had to have kind of just a uh, kind of a large miscellaneous item just to kind of cover all that stuff mm-hmm. that this doesn't fall in those categories. And so, like you said, there'd be some months where we'd barely spend any miscellaneous money and other times would be like four or 500 bucks over, you know, just kind of, just kind of depending on how the month went. So I think it'd be helpful to, have everything broken down to where there's not, there's, there's less gray, less miscellaneous, everything kind of has its category. And yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think in the, with the, with the larger expenses too, it's nice to kind of know what's required or like when it will be done. I think part of like, we haven't done a lot of like amortization tables on the loans or anything like that. So it's just kind of like, we just know it's out there and it'll get paid off eventually, right. but, but to kind of have an idea of different end dates or to have lights at the end of the tunnel would be, would be helpful on some of that kind of stuff or to know we could do X trip. If we do this, it would be, yeah. Cause we, you know, there's different vacations we've talked about, you know, kind of larger scale things or kind of dream vacations. So if we could add those in if, for something like even five years down the line, but be saving towards that, that'd be kind of nice to have that as a goal or see like our progress towards that. So all, all, all that stuff sounds really, really cool. I always ask people like, if you, would you rather, know that you have like $5,000 in savings? Or would you rather know that you have, you know, $1,500 set aside for the car and you've got $2,500 mm-hmm. for the house? And like, to me, it's, there, there's nothing wrong really with having just a big savings number, but you get so much more clarity. And then when you have to change, which is what we're going to be talking about in a little bit, when you do have to pivot and something happens and it's like, well, that wasn't in the budget. Now we have to do something. Mm-hmm. You're making a much more thoughtful and intentional choice Mm -hmm. because when you just kind of pull you know a thousand out of savings what is you know what does that mean but if you're pulling you know 500 from auto maintenance and 200 from this and whatever you you know what the impact of Mm -hmm. that is Mm going to be i could tell that rule two and the way it makes all those expenses really concrete was pretty appealing to sam and kayla so i want to see if i could do something similar with their student loans let's look at um Student loans, because that's something that has been brought up. So I want to show you a tool in the YNAB app that um, I got rid of my student loans before this feature came out, and I am glad about that, but (laughs) I'm a little sad I didn't get to use this feature Mm because I probably would have paid down my debt better if I did. Mm -hmm. So let's just make it really simple. Let's say I have one big student loan. So I'm going to go add an account over here. So let's just call this my dumb student. 
student loan <laughs> that I hate. Uh, I'm going to categorize this as a student loan. So let's say this is $10,000 loan with a, let's say a 6.5% interest rate. I should know what this is. Kind of have to <laughs> finagle a minimum payment that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to create a new category for this. I'm just gonna put this with my bills. So now you'll see here in my budget, I've got a spot for that student loan. I have a category for that mm -hmm. now. If I select this category, um, we'll start to see some information over here. Um, it's gonna prompt me to create a target. And when I do that, it's gonna show me some info. So the first thing it's gonna tell me is how much interest is left to pay. So that's apart from the principal, right? Mm -hmm. and you can actually see that broken down down here. So we can see mm -hmm. that I have $10,000 principal remaining. Uh, uh, 2,400-ish of that is gonna be interest. So my total that I'm gonna pay is this much. It's also gonna tell me how much time that's going to cost me. So in this case, mm -hmm. I've got another about seven years to pay this off. Um, so now what I can do if, if I'm like you guys and I'm like, I, I would love to knock this out sooner, but I want to know like what that means concretely. Uh, if I've set up my YNAB budget where I've got all my monthly bills and I've got, you know, my more frequent, uh, expenses and I've got all those true expenses, then I should have a really good sense of how much money I can actually send toward this thing. So then let's say I change this to 200. This now shows me kind of the different trajectory and it's gonna tell me how much that's actually gonna save me uh, in dollars and how much time that's mm. actually going to save me. I can also do the same thing if I just do like one, like let's say, you know, I, I get a bonus at work and I just wanna send all of that bonus to the loan. So if I put that in over here, I can also see the impact that that is gonna have. So I can see that, let's just take this out for a second. Just that $1,000 kind of bump toward it is going to save me this much, and it's going to knock almost a year off of that loan. Mm -hmm. um, I can also do this another way. Let's say that I just want to think in terms of time. What would it take for this loan to disappear um, in, let's say, three years? Let's be really ambitious here. There it is. It's done the math for me. This is the total monthly payment I need to make for this thing to be gone by January of 2026. So, and this and this is how much it's gonna save me in money, and this is how much it's gonna save me in time. You know, you're talking about kind of that balance of you wanna like make sure you're living your life now and not just like being frugal for the sake of being frugal. But also, like, you know, this thing is currently getting in the way of mm -hmm. some of your priorities. And I think this could be a really great tool for you to figure out like how, how much do we wanna actually be being aggressive on this? Do we need to be doing that? And what would the impact of that be? So that then whatever you choose with your student loans, you can feel confident that you're, you're doing what makes sense for you right now and, and what you wanna be doing with it right now. Definitely gonna be playing around with that. Yeah, that, that looks awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly, exactly the kind of thing we're looking for is, yeah, cause we'll get a, a holiday bonus and we'll throw in the loans, but we don't really know what that did. You know, we know, we know, we know we paid off a chunk of it, but to be able to see how much time that saved us or to see what we need to do to pay it off in X amount of years that, yeah, that, that sounds really, yeah. that's sometimes exactly that kind of thing we've been looking for. So yeah, it's awesome. So much of, I think what makes loans so tricky is it is really hard to get it really concrete. I think that's probably on purpose. <laughs> um, so that's the tinfoil hat there. But um, mm -hmm. I've talked a lot about kind of like bills and true expenses, like things that you need to do. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you want to do. Um, so I'd be curious to hear from each of you, um, what is something that you really want to see in the budget? And I don't mean like from a, you know, be a fully optimized human being standpoint, <laughs> but just from a things that bring you joy, what do you want to make sure is represented when you make that plan? Uh, this is, I mean, this is a lot less... It just we've kind of gotten into this thing of uh, ordering like boba tea, you know, like in the afternoons for each, each other. So like we, like we've kind of gotten <laughs> this nice. boba kick. So maybe maybe, really? maybe 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 wouldn't be like a long term thing, but just to be nice to know that we've 
got that covered, I guess, you know, that that's like, yeah. you know, that we haven't, that we're not going crazy on it or whatever, you know, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little silly, but something like that could be. I mean, we are going crazy on it, but, but like, <laughs> it would be nice to know that it's like, but it, maybe it'd just be nice to have that awareness of like how much money we are actually spending on yeah, tea, well, because I think it's ridiculous. Okay. I love this because it's clearly something they like and they feel a little weird about spending as much on it as they do. But you and I know this is what budgeting is all about giving you freedom to spend on the things that bring you joy. So I'm going to see if I can chip away at that hesitation. The main thing a budget should do, if you're asking like, is my budget working? The question that you should be able to say yes to is, is my budget aligning my money with my priorities? Mm -hmm. Is my budget helping me to make sure money is going towards the things I actually care about and not things I don't really care about as much? So for instance, if you guys were like, you know, really on the edge financially or whatever, and you were spending crazy amounts on boba tea and that made it so you couldn't, you know, keep the lights on, (laughs) obviously you'd rather have the lights on than have boba tea, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you know, when we think abstractly about like, I want to save more, I want to, you know, make sure I'm doing this, that, and the other thing. Um, it sounds like Boba Tea is like a, a higher priority for you than other people. And so part of what you're doing is, yes, making sure you have awareness of it. But you're also just giving yourself permission to like Boba Tea and spend more on it than the average person, you mm-hmm. know. So I would say if you have the, the wiggle room, make sure that you give, you give yourself what <laughs> feels like an absurd Boba Tea budget. Um, and then... Maybe you'll be like, oh, we're cra- we're crazier than we thought. Or <laughs> yeah. maybe you won't. But like having that in the budget means you, whenever you do that, at now you know that, you know, we're doing this and the car insurance payment's going to be fine. The property taxes are going to be fine. You know, you can do that without any sense of like guilt or anxiety and just be like, mm-hmm. we like boba tea and we made a plan because we're grown up, so we can kind of do whatever we want. <laughs> Yeah, because that's that's the whole thing. Like we'll go we'll go like a week where we order like you know a bunch of it, and then it's like uh, we should be saving money, and it's like you know so it'd be nice to know that like well we're not or we're still within our boba budget, you know, or if we had a category for it, you know, it's like cause yeah, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it's kind of yeah, it's just kind of floating out there, and you don't really know how crazy you're going. So yeah, that I think that'd be helpful. And it's, yeah, some more stuff like that too. It does not have to all be boba. Yeah, there there are people out there who will say that like this is the way you should this is what your budget should look like, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of ridiculous because your budget is going to look like the things that you care about. So, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I, I'm putting in my vote for a boba tea category (laughs) for sure. Good Um, idea, Sam. Good idea. (laughs) It sounds like they're starting to get a little more comfortable with prioritizing fun in their budget. So I'm going to push them just a little further with my favorite YNAB trick. So on that same note, then I want to introduce you to, um, one of my favorite things uh, in YNAB. One of our teachers, Dave, came up with this uh, years ago. Um, And it's a really cool way to make sure you're not just saving for car repairs and all the boring grown up stuff, but also like the stuff that typically we look at and we go, oh, I'd love to have that, but I'm never gonna have it because I'm never gonna, you know, make a plan to have it. Um, And that's what's called a wish farm. So how a wish farm works is the first thing you want to do, and here's my very serious recommendation, have a date about this. Absolutely go have a date about this because it's very fun. Um, <laughs> y- your wish list is just where you're going to put all of the things that you would like to buy that you're just not going to like go to the store and just buy, right? Uh, the way that a lot of people do it, the way that Dave kind of first talked about doing it, is break things into small, medium, and large. So small could be like $100 or less or $200 or less or whatever. Um, but large should be like large, like very large. So let's say on my wish list, let's say I want a new microphone. Let's say that's small. And I want a PS5. That's going to be a medium one. And then let's say I'm a board game guy. So let's say board game table. Those are very expensive. (laughs) What you want to do is just fill this up with as much stuff as you have. Get yourself a big old wish list um, for some things are going to be just for you, Sam. Some are going to be just for you, Kayla. A lot of them are going to be for both of you. 
you're going to want to figure out how much does this stuff actually cost. So, you know, go do some research. So I think a PS5 is like, what, $500 right now? Mm -hmm. Let's say the new mic I want is like $150. And I do know because I'm a nerd, uh, a board game table what is, is like a board game table? <laughs> a board game table is, okay, so a board game table. I'm interested. <laughs> it's, um, So, let's, so what I'm going to do now is um, for my wish farm, um, the way that I like to do it is to pick a small one, pick a medium one, pick a large one. You don't have to do it that way. You could pick one for Sam, one for Kayla, one for both of you, kind of up to you how you want to do it. But pick two, three that you want to focus on right now. And you're going to move those out of your wish farm or move them out of your wish list into your wish farm and just kind of set a... Uh, set a target for them. So let's say I want a board game table in three years. Then now it's there, it's accounted for in my budget. Same thing with the PS5. Let's say I want that by this time, two years from now. And you just go through it like that, treating it just like a normal kind of true expense. And then just like any other expense, you are going to just let these things fill up until eventually you fill it all the way up. And now you can afford the thing and afford mm -hmm. everything else you need to afford. And then you go buy the thing. Um, and then you've now, uh, you've harvested that crop in your wish farm and you're gonna pick something else on your wish list that you wanna move up into its slot. And you just keep going like that. Um, so I really like this for a few reasons. One is I think you gotta have fun things in your budget or you're not gonna wanna look at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you might know that you should, but you're not gonna wanna, it's not gonna be fun. But if you have one part of your budget that is specifically just like, we do not need this thing, this is not necessary, but we do want this thing and, and we're gonna make sure <laughs> we get it. Um, that I think is so, it's just so exciting when it does happen. And then not only do you get to buy the thing, but you get to go like, okay, what's, what's the next thing? Mm -hmm. Right. If there's one thing that at YNAB we wish we could get everyone to understand is that budgets aren't about like keeping you from getting what you want. They're about getting you what you want in a way that makes mm -hmm. sense. And that's what the wish farm is all about. So I'd be curious, just as a fun question, what would be something that each of you would consider at least putting in a wish farm? Maybe more of a maybe more than two years out, but I like to go to like. I'd like to go to Europe. So I've never, I've never really been out of the country. So I thought it'd be fun to go to like Europe, you know, some kind of trip there to like, you know, it doesn't have to be like, doesn't have to be a tour of Europe, but just like to one place or something just for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So some, some kind of big trip. Um, I would do a trip too. I want to go somewhere tropical though, like Fiji okay. or um, yeah, somewhere like that. I like, I like two trips just side by <laughs> side, <laughs> seeing which one. Stack both of them. <laughs> How do you guys handle kind of your own fun spending? So like when Sam wants to go do something that just Sam likes or buy something that just Sam likes or Kayla wants to buy something that just she likes, wh what do you do for that right now? Is it just kind of shared? Do you have some kind of system? How do you, how do you handle that right now? I mean, we just kind of talk about it and then if he, there's something he wants to do he just does it and then if there's someone I, I want to do I just do it yeah I think there's if it's big enough we'll probably talk about beforehand sometimes you just kind of, maybe we just kind of do it and then talk about it after or get asked well, what's this what's this charge on the credit card statement kind of thing or you know <laughs> kind of explain what it was yeah. or something you know it's, it's it's some of a some of b but yeah I think generally if it's a if it's, if it's a really substantial purchase, I think we generally just try to kind of touch base beforehand and then just see if we're both on board with it. But um, I don't know, or maybe we maybe, maybe we need to do, maybe we need to do more of that stuff to have more examples because I think a lot of times it's just kind of family trips and maybe we don't do enough of just Kayla or just Sam stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I get. I guess a question there is like, do each of you feel kind of uh, like? at liberty to do that? Or do you feel a little bit of like, oh, I don't know if I should be spending money like that because we gotta, you know, chat it out or whatever? Yeah, I think for me, at least, maybe not so much worrying about chatting with, or trying to kill about it before him, but just like kind of, again, just kind of, was just the general idea of that we're trying to save for different things and not knowing like, if that's, if, if, I, if I do, if I spend X amount on, on X thing, is that gonna torpedo us kind of thing? You know, like, I don't know, I don't want, like, I don't wanna, without knowing what kind of impacts that purchase would have, it's hard. It's 
makes me anxious to do it, you know, cause it's kind of like the, yeah. the unknown. So like, if I just, if I just go off and do something, am I going to set us back on our, on the loans or am I set us back on the trip or whatever, you know? So I think that's been kind of what makes me pause to do something like that is just kind of not knowing what it will do. Um, as you kind of work out, like, what does it cost to be us in a given month and covering those on monthly expenses and doing a wish farm or not doing a wish farm? Uh, one thing you might consider is just creating a, some people call it mad money. Some people call it uh, my fun money or spending money, whatever you want to call it. Um, just having one category that is just, this is whatever amount it is. This is the category that Sam has sovereign authority over. <laughs> There's no questions asked. It is just, if a transaction comes out of there, that's Sam's fun money. And same thing for Kayla, but that's a, that's just okay. a thought. Um, especially it sounds like for you, Sam, being able to know that, um, yeah, that you can get that thing for you and kind of do, or, or have a sense of what the timeline might be. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to set aside 50 or a hundred bucks or whatever would make sense for you as your fun money, then if you see something that's like 400 bucks, then you could have a sense of, okay, I could do that with my fun money in four months mm -hmm. and know that everything else is fine. And I'm not, take away from Kayla's fun either. Mm -hmm. um, some couples find that that really is super great for them. Others just like doing everything together. So up to you, but that's just a, just a thought. Do you have any thoughts on that? If that sounds like something that would work for you or what do you think? Yeah, I think it sounds like a, 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 a nice idea yeah, to just have at least some amount to where we can kind of just do it without having to even worry about it or just kind of that's, our realm or our, yeah, it's like that, that money is we were, we can do whatever with it. So yeah, I, I think that sounds like a, it's worth, it's worth trying at least, you know, and seeing how we like it and yeah. seeing, seeing, seeing if it works. Um, yeah. yeah, I would definitely try it too. Now, from what I've learned about Sam and Kayla, I have a feeling that they're really going to want to stick to the budget and that's great. But I also want to make sure they have the right mindset that they control the budget, not the other way around. So you know what it's time for. It's time for rule three. Okay, so we've talked about kind of what goes into making the plan. So now let's chat about like how you actually use it, right? Uh, and um, what does it look like when the budget is wrong? Uh, let's say that you're out looking for a gift for your friend or your sister or whatever, um, and you find just the, the perfect, perfect gift. But in gifts, you only have $60. So in kind of traditional budgeting, there's kind of two things you can do. One is you just don't buy the gift uh, because you, you, you can't, it's not in your budget. Um, and that sucks. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> this is why everybody hates budgets is because it doesn't let you buy things that you're like, but that, I really care about that. Um, or the other thing you do is you break your budget and you're a, a bad person. <laughs> right? Those are like the two <laughs> options in traditional budgeting. Uh, but you know, Again, we said that a budget is about aligning your, your money with your priorities. And mm -hmm. your priorities change all the time, right? Like uh, even day to day, sometimes, you know, if, if a friend that you haven't seen in years rolls into town and wants to get dinner and you're like, oh my gosh, that would be so great. Um, that probably changes w the order of your priorities on that day. So we want to make sure that our budget is flexible to deal with that because it's our plan, right? Like it's not, it's, it's not something that has descended from heaven. It's something that we made and it's something that we can change. So let's go ahead and just say we bought that gift and we're paying $75. So if we hop into the budget, now up here in your focus views, you can see this one telling you have something overspent. And if we click that, we can see that, yeah, now we have spent $15 more than what we originally assigned. And that's a problem uh, because if we don't deal with this, that means that one of these categories, one or more of these categories actually has $15 less in mm -hmm. it, right? Because we assigned every dollar to a category. This can't just like exist out in space and it's, it's, it's taking money from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the question I'm gonna ask myself or you're gonna ask you're going to talk about together, depending on how big of a thing this is, is what matters to me or to us less than getting this really bonkers, awesome gift for 
for my sister. And you're just going to look through uh, through your jobs and figure that out. So it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be your utilities. It's not going to be your mortgage. It's going to be something more flexible. So maybe it's, maybe it's like, okay, we've already, we haven't driven that much this month and we actually can uh, afford to do, do with a little less fuel money. But then we're just going to choose that category, move that money over. And now we're going to see that this is all leveled out. And we can see here that um, we've got $15 less here and we've covered it. This, by the way, is um, rule three of YNAB. We call it roll with the punches. I like to just refer to it as change your budget when you change your mind. This goes really well with rule one because when you've given every single dollar a job, then you can't just kind of be like, okay, I guess we're just spending $15 more. You have to decide what you're spending $15 less on in mm -hmm. order to do this. I find that the alternative for me in the past was when I felt like I'd overspent on something, then what I would do is just kind of tighten up on everything. You know, there'd just be mm -hmm. this kind of like shadow of scarcity over my spending. So I either would like stop spending on like everything or I just feel really bad and like anxious when I did. And what this does is it gives me the control to say, okay, this is like, A, like, I'm not a bad person. This is just a reflection of my priorities. This is fine. I don't have to like cry. I can just make a choice about what matters to me less and then update my plan. And we get to keep moving forward. I still get to be a good person. Uh, I still get to buy the awesome gift for my sister. And I still have total clarity and control over what my money is doing. How are you guys feeling about this, this rule? Yeah, I I think what what kind of you, that anxiety you describe is kind of how I feel. Like when we go over something, they would just kind of kind of just feel this urge to just generally just pull back and not buy anything. And I think probably it's overcorrection sometimes. You know, you're you're mm -hmm. you're not you're you do a little bit overspending one area, and then you just stop in five others when you really didn't have to. So I, I, I like the idea of just kind of resolving it once it happens. So you know, just kind of and then. Like you said, you kind of look at the different categories and make a choice as to what you can stand to take a hit on to, to do what you want to do kind of thing. So I, yeah, I, I definitely like the idea of that and, um, and do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm on, I'm on the same page. I think that that like feeling frozen, if you slightly overspend in one category and then like totally pulling back, but in reality, there's a lot of months where like some categories we wouldn't meet anyway. So it would be there already is that excess. Um, so we're kind of looking at it very black and white versus like there's a great middle period where we could pull from the other ones that aren't being met and then hmm. feel like we're not going, we need to like cut everything, you know? Yeah. And there's, and, and there's only so much you can plan too. Like you were like, you were like, you know, like you were saying stuff happens. So like, there's going to be some things that come up, you know, like you said, a friend comes in town or so if it's a bad thing, you know, like we've had, we've had our son like break his arm, you know, if something like that, like that happens, you can't, you can't, that's not going to be on your wish list or your wish farm. Obviously yeah. you, know, you can't, he's not going to warn gonna, you before it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just going to happen. So it's like to be able to have in place a kind of a system for dealing with that, I think is, a, is, is would be helpful, you know, that way yeah. you're not, you're not worrying about it so much when we get, when you get the hospital bill, cause you've already, you already know how it's gonna, how it's gonna get broken apart. So yeah, I, like yeah. I think it's a good idea. So they're open to it. That's good. But I'm going to push it just a little more because I want them to see the full scope of what rule three really means. I think a lot of people hear this rule and they think, okay, the reason for this rule is, when I overspend, then I can change my budget. And I think why I like to say change your budget when you change your mind is because you can change your mind before you do any spending, right? You know, if you find out that your favorite band ever is going to do a concert, like their last concert ever in your area, and that's really important to you, but you don't have money for it, and you just want to move money over to change that, that's rule three too, because that's the same thing, right? Your priorities change. I mean, often overspending kind of happens to us. You know, we get the the medical bill and it's more than we thought or utilities is more than we thought or, or whatever. Uh, but other times we can like see it coming. We're like making the choice. And so I also encourage people, you know, if you know like, oh, a friend's coming into town and we're going to have dinner or like those concert tickets, you can just move money 
proactively if you know you're going to need it. Like, again, it's your budget. Um, try and let go of like language of like, well, this is wrong. Uh, the better question is, it does this align with my priorities? If you're looking at your plan and you're going, we can still pay all the things that we really care about and we want to make this change, then that's, that sounds great. That sounds like your mm -hmm. plan is serving you. And the reality is that a flexible plan that changes as you change is going to be a lot more sustainable than a plan that has to be rigid and followed mm -hmm. to the letter, you know, uh, and can never, ever be broken. Um, with YNAB, there isn't really breaking the budget. There's just changing the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I, I cannot emphasize enough, like what a what a shift that can be. Mm -hmm. um, but it's what I really encourage you to, to lean into. Um, Cause when that, when you can kind of make that flip to this is our budget and we're the, we're the boss of the budget. That is, I think that can really change um, how you, how you think about spending and, and enjoying the mm -hmm. way you spend. So then getting to uh, rule four, rule four is called age your money. Um, and the way I think about rule four is it's about building your buffer. It's about building yourself breathing room. The thing we tend to recommend for people to, to aim for to get started is to get a month ahead. So I am basically paying next month's bills with this month's uh, this month's income, and I'm mm -hmm. paying this month's bills with last month's income. I'm giving myself kind of a 30-day buffer to uh, where I know all of my expenses for that month are going to be covered, and everything I'm making now is just going towards the future. And for you guys, I mean, it sounds like you guys really care a lot about having a lot of security and knowing that you're set up in a good spot. So for you, you might be like, one month is great. I'd rather have five. So what that looks like for you is just to, when you get money, just keep filling up next month's plan. If you fill up all of next month's plan, move to the month after that and uh, and just allow yourself to build that breathing room out. You're, you're just gonna have so much more flexibility in your budget just so that when life changes or you wanna make a big change, you have the, the space and the security that you need to feel mm -hmm. at peace about that and confident to be able to do that. Um, so is the idea to assign like all of like checking savings, everything, like all, all your dollars get assigned? Is that, is that, is that generally the idea is what you're yes. supposed to do? Really yes. Yeah. Okay. This is a really good question. A lot of people who value savings and security assume that your savings dollars should stay outside your budget. And I'm going to show Sam why if you really value security, the opposite is true. Our savings are going to be a lot more effective when we kind of know what we're actually saving for. In reality, every savings category is actually a spending category. It's just how much time is going to pass before you spend it. Now, what people worry about is, am I going to spend those savings dollars by accident? I don't want to do that. Um, the only way you could do that is if you were to assign something out of this category, right? So the only way I could spend my anniversary money on McDonald's is if I enter a transaction for McDonald's and categorize it as my anniversary money which I'm not gonna do probably unless I'm having McDonald's on my anniversary, which <laughs> I might do. Um, so like the, it's rather than the accounts kind of squirreling money away and like that's how you kind of hide your money from yourself, YNAB protects that money for you by just saying, hey, this is what this money is for. So if you're gonna spend it on something else, make sure that's what you wanna do. Typically I've, we've always just used budgets as kind of like a monthly thing, but yeah, when you, uh account for the long-term things, then yeah, it makes sense to assign the savings. Cause yeah, you're saving for, yeah. even if it's college education or whatever, then it's still, it's going to be spent eventually in theory, you know? So yeah, right. that makes sense. It's a lot harder to spend savings when you know exactly what you're spending it from, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot easier to spend $500 in savings than $500 of our anniversary money. Right. Mm -hmm. To kind of wrap up here, uh, let's talk a little bit about like what this might look like kind of habit wise in your daily life. Before you spend, check the budget. If you do that, that's 95% of everything, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Even if you even if you overspend, knowing that you're doing that consciously is so different than just having no awareness at all. Mm -hmm. If you can have some kind of routine for checking in on the budget together, um, 
Uh, I I kind of recommend like a weekly thing um, so that it doesn't have to be like a huge deal. But Mm -hmm. it it could be as simple as in the morning, just taking five minutes to be like, to look through it and just say how we feel about this. The more you can kind of synchronize together and make sure that it's representing both of you, I think the more effective it's gonna be for you and the more likely you are to keep keep it going, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I agree, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think that about wraps it up for us. Yeah, I appreciate you just being willing to come chat about stuff. Um, and I'm excited to hear about how this all goes for you guys. No, yeah, and thank, thank, thank you for all your time. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm legitimately like kind of excited to kind of sit down and try to like figure, come up with a plan because I feel like yeah. we've been kind of operating for a while without one or just got a kind of an idea of one, but not really having the nuts and bolts of it. So to kind of be able to perhaps, you know, kind of have some end dates or have some concrete plans is kind of exciting. So yeah, yeah kind I would of, highly recommend, uh, like do it over some boba tea or something, <laughs> associate it with something nice, you know, make it, yeah. make it a little bit of a date. Cause yeah, you're just talking about what kind of life you want to live together. And that's, that's, that's a cool, like as a couple, that can be a really great bonding thing. Um, Totally. Which is weird when I talk about budget dates, people are like, that's <laughs> not, that doesn't sound very romantic at all. I disagree, but yeah. I also work for a budget company. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, really appreciate Thank you. getting to meet yeah. you guys. Great, Great to, to meet, meet you. You too. Yeah, you too. And uh, wish you wish you and your family all the best. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know, looking back on my conversation with Sam and Kayla, I didn't see a couple that was struggling to get by, you know, hanging by the edge. I saw a couple that was doing pretty well. They were on the same page, they had each other's back, and they just wanted to feel more confident about what their money was doing, more confident about their student loan situation, about how they were going to achieve their big goals, and about spending money on fun stuff without guilt or anxiety. And we found that that confidence comes from the clarity that you get with Rule 1, the consistency that comes with Rule 2, the control that you get with Rule 3, and the cushion that you build with rule four. Those four things come together to give you the confidence you need with big things and boba tea. So thank you, Sam and Kayla, for sitting down with me and thank you for coming along. If you like this video and would like to see more coaching calls like this, you can let us know in the comments. And while you're there, you can also tell us, what's your boba tea? What's the thing you definitely spend way more money on than the average person? Mine is is board games. It is definitely definitely board games. But that's it for me. I'm Ben with YNAB, and thank you so much for watching.